Morocco is one of the world's top suppliers of hashish. According to the World Customs Authority, Morocco supplies 70% of Europe's hash market, mainly smuggled through to Spain, France and Holland. Since the 60s, hippies, tourists and artists have travelled to Morocco's rift mountains to take advantage of the huge supply of pure and cheap hashish. Known for the vibrant cities of Tangiers, Marrakesh and the blue city of Chefchaouen, Morocco is a dream for travellers searching for infused cultural experiences. The rural landscape still holds a nomadic energy, despite its barren appearance. Its hilly terrain is dotted with cacti and olive trees, cornfields and small villages. Greetings of Salam wa alaykum salam are often exchanged. Groups of men seek refuge from the heat under the trees and women walk in pairs with their children strapped to their backs. The mosques compete during the time of prayers over their duas being heard. You can usually hear three mullahs praying at one time. The contrast between picturesque cities and rural life could not be more obvious. Poverty and the harsh landscape make up the complete picture of Morocco. This is Abdul. Abdul is one of 800,000 Moroccans making their living off the cultivation of cannabis. Here in the Rift Mountains, it is estimated that 125,000 acres of land is dedicated to its production. The desert-like Rift Mountains are covered in light green cannabis fields. The crops grow openly and the fields begin right near the edge of the road. You only need to start ascending into the Rift for the scent of marijuana to wash over you. However, the trade has brought little wealth to this region of the country. The hash is produced here, then sold to smugglers. It is then taken to the small villages along the north of Morocco and shipped across the Mediterranean to the south of Spain, then distributed throughout the rest of Europe. Farmers like Abdul are paid next to nothing for their crops. In Amsterdam, you can buy a gram of Moroccan hashish for about 8 euro. Here, from the farmer, you can buy the exact same gram for 1 euro. That's a 700% markup sale from source to European retailer. Abdul is his family's sole provider, doing a job born out of necessity rather than choice. Illiteracy and a lack of education remains a barrier to many Moroccan adults searching for a better way of life. In 2012, adult illiteracy stood at 28% of the population, and in 2013, unemployment was at 3 million people. Despite improvements in access to educational programs, only 53% of the country's students who were enrolled in middle school continued on to high school. Of that figure, less than 15% will graduate, citing family poverty, child labour and parental disinterest as reasons for leaving their education system.
On a whole, the locals don't have a problem with the farmers growing cannabis. They understand that it's being done as a means for survival. The opinion begins to divide when it comes to selling the drug. Some turn a blind eye because it stimulates a local economy, but others have an issue with it because of its illegality. Nonetheless, the hash industry is seen as bringing shame to the Islamic community. The Quran states that anything that takes you away from your clean and pure mental state is haram. Be it through cultivation, consumption or selling, marijuana is universally considered illegal. However, in recent years, some countries have made certain facets of the industry legal, but with restrictions, allowing the government to cash in on a lucrative trade. In Morocco, legislation is currently being drafted which will allow cannabis to be sold to the government for medicinal and industrial purposes. It is hoped this will prevent small farmers, like Abdul, from being part of the trafficking of drugs. <laughs> Hashish is a $10 billion industry for Morocco. Decriminalization would allow the government to tax production, assisting the country with its $36 billion debt. It may even help lower the 9% unemployment rate.